get groceries delivered to your door in as fast as an hour with Instacart. They handpick fresh groceries from your local store and let you shop multiple stores in a single order. Use our link to get free delivery on your first order over $35. Just visit cart.simpsonsiblings.com or check out the link in the description. Hey everybody, this is Harry. And this is Sean. And we're the Simpson Siblings and it's Christmas time. And we're excited. And we're going to talk about a Christmas episode. Last year we talked about Simpsons roasting on an open fire. So this year we're going to do Marge Be Not Proud, which is a favorite of mine. It's a fun one. Yeah, there's so much in this one. And it's it's got a good balance of fun and some heartfelt stuff as well. Their Christmas episodes always have like some conflict, but good feels at the end. Yeah, you got to have those good feels. So uh, this is Season 7, Episode 11, originally aired December 17th, 1995, um, written by Mike Scully and directed by Stephen Dean Moore, and our guest stars are Lawrence Tierney and Phil Hartman. And then we have the chalkboard scene at the beginning, I Will Not Stop Talking About the 12-Inch Pianist. Um... (laughs) When I saw that in the intro, I was like, I can't wait to hear Sean say this out loud. I remember this joke going around in elementary school, and mm-hmm. we'll just say, if you don't know what it means, Google it. No, don't Google <laughs> it! No, don't Google it! I was it. waiting for your reaction. <laughs> oh, God. And then we have the couch gag, where Homer, there's a big, large drain in the middle, and Homer pulls the plug, and they all get sucked down yep which what if he would have pulled that drain on the last one that we did where mm-hmm. they're swimming through the carpet and... so two two water themed water carpet themed simpsons couch gags which is a weird thing to say carpet diem <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> no Sean. oh god all right, so let's get into the episode. <laughs> we start right off the bat with the crusty kind of Christmas, which reminds me of the crusty comedy classic. Yes. Like, he needs to stop doing words in three sets of Ks. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's not He's good. He's like, that's not good. At the ILG Little Sweetheart Cupcakes bit, is yeah. just perfect. I'm pretty sure that's Hank Azaria doing that voice. It, it's, it has Futurama feels, too. Yeah, it does. Selling your body's chemicals after you die. And my little sweetheart cupcakes, a subsidiary of ILG. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> On a kid's Christmas show. Oh, God. I love how it makes fun of those Christmas specials that would always have, like, famous people stopping by. Yeah. Like, those were pretty big in the, the 80s and 90s. And... and his awful way he presents, oh, hi, didn't hear you come in. <laughs> <laughs> you you always get quality when you get crusty. I yeah. mean, he's synonymous with quality. Quality with a K. <laughs> yes. Oh, dear God. So I did a little bit of research. The first guest that he has is Tom Landry, who was a football player and coach, which is why I didn't recognize him. But you may recognize him because Homer bought his hat and you only moved twice. Oh. Remember when he had that little hat? Yeah. Yeah. Um, He specifically said he bought Tom Landry's hat. And the... uh, Who? uh, That lady... Even Krusty can't say it, yeah, so Krusty I don't know. Can't say it. You can speak Spanish, and this is supposed to be South American. They speak Spanish in South America, which means you should try to pronounce it. Or it's Brazilian. So, so, so she is. <laughs> Zoxachilita? So she is a parody of Zuxa, or Zaza, who is an actress and TV host from Brazil. So she's not actually a real person. Yeah, but... She is a spoof. She does come up later in an mm-hmm. episode, Blame It on Lisa, mm-hmm. where she's on the fam- very famous kids show, 
Nutella boobies. Yeah, I'm glad you got to say that part. Yeah. Because I looked it up and I was like, I don't feel like saying that. And then you did it for me. I think you have to say it now. No. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the other thing that was also just, I guess just... Um, Either it was a really well-placed joke because it wasn't dated yet or it was badly placed for how close it came to it. But the video Christmas card from Tupac Shakur, he would die less than a year after this episode aired. Oh, I thought it was before, which is kind of like why they were making a joke out of it. But No, no, like, well, he died a year after this episode aired. Yeah. So the joke was before he died. Yeah, but the way they presented it, I thought he would have died before. Oh, before this. the episode aired, but because just, it's a video. Yeah. Yeah, so instead it's, I mean, that could be like one of those, like, did the Simpsons project to this? But, I mean, it's just, it was, They just do, like, so many jokes per minute, they the just JPM. Do, the JPM's off the charts that who knows what's happening anymore. We don't have that kind of luxury in 2021. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> um... I don't know. I don't know what I mean by this. <laughs> We're just spitballing at this point. Um, and then Lisa goes, isn't Krusty Jewish? And then Bart's line is so perfect. <laughs> and the delivery of it is so perfect. Christmas is a time where people of all religions come together to worship Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man. And some people do legitimately think like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is where we get the Bone Storm commercial. And we're going to spend oh, like yes. half of this episode talking about the Bone Storm commercial because I wrote over a page of notes on the Bone Storm commercial. I feel underprepared now. God, Sean, you're going to fail this test on the Bone Storm commercial, which I abbreviated as BS commercial. <laughs> um,. The, so I did a lot of pausing during this scene because I feel like it just has so much in it. The video game system they have, it looks like a PlayStation 1 with like some extra doohickeys on it. But the controllers look like Genesis controllers and it has a, it's cartridge based. Yeah. Um, and they start out, there's just a guy trying to fight a tank. <laughs> and that's, and they're like getting bored of the game. Um, I love that there's a girl playing too, because they didn't show a lot of girls playing video games back then. And Santa knocks through the wall Kool-Aid man style. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And knocks over their Christmas tree. And the reindeer seem to be rabid or something. And they're wearing like spiked collars. Don't they, I can't remember which part of it. The commercial it is, but they have like flames coming out of their nostrils. Yeah, that happens a little later. Yeah, they're very, these are the most extreme reindeer you've ever seen. Um, Santa has extreme 90 sunglasses, and he speaks, the way he speaks to the camera kind of reminds me of Poochie when he says, Okay, kids, always recycle to the extreme. <laughs> He's got that in your face style. He's got that in, he does. Santa's got that. Um, he takes out a bazooka, and the bazooka is electrified. Why is that necessary? That's science. And then he points it at the children. He points it at the children. The children are, like, cowering for, like, a split second, and they move out of the way just in time for a cart, like, a game cartridge to burst out of the bazooka and into their system. And I noticed after the fact... It literally, like, the cartridge goes through the cartridge that's already in the system. Oh, it's it like, it. Yes, it, like, bursts through it to the other side. And the other cartridge is, like, is, like, hanging out of it like this because it's just in... I'm, 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 making, a, I'm making gestures, but pretend but I'm doing gestures. That's in a lot mind. of detail that gets looked over. Yeah. But someone animated. Yeah, like, it literally, it's like the, it's like the arrow being shot on top of the arrow kind of thing. Um. Uh, yeah, and Bart's eating this all up. Yeah, he's the target audience. Exactly. Uh, the the game Bone Storm is obviously a ripoff of Mortal Kombat, 
and you've just got these people with like six arms just punching each other while like <laughs> body parts falling through the air. <laughs> and Santa says, buy me bone store or go to hell. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. The language so, part aside, I feel like this could have been like a early 90s video game commercial. Oh, yeah. They got extreme and they got weird. And this just, this is a great parody because it takes you right back to that time um, of video game commercials. And, uh, of course, Bart repeats this verbatim to Marge. <laughs> Buy me Bone Storm or go to hell. <laughs> and um, Homer's response Oh, I didn't write it down, but it was just basically like when he got like the mini electronic football game. Yeah. And the moral of the story is when he got the game, it was the happiest he'd been in his life. It was the happiest he'd been in his life. It doesn't help to like sway him away from wanting the game. It's just Mm -hmm. reaffirming Mm -hmm. that you may not get this, but when I got what I wanted, I was happy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And I wonder, like something I mentioned a little later is that like there's so much stacking on top of Bart's motivation like, so many different scenes that set him up to when he finally does the shoplifting. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure. And yeah. Like, just, it's a path leading him there. Yeah. Marge is so cute with her little tuck into bed song, um, which becomes very important later. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of that in this episode, too, where it's like a scene that doesn't seem like it's that important, having a really good payoff later. Um, and her tuck-in song kind of reminds me of Mother Simpson when she sings the the Fig Newton song <laughs> yeah. to Homer. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's funny how Lisa just soaks it all up, and then Bart's just like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a little bit older. I'm too, much, I'm too old for this. Yeah, yeah. So Bart sees the ad for Bone Storm 99 cents from the Androids Dungeon. <laughs> And he runs in what and savings. Oh, this whole conversation. Um, where it turns out that's like the rental price. And he's like, Yes, oh please take my money. <laughs> he reaches for it. <laughs> and I like how he just uses like a Sharpie pen to like nudge his finger away, like, I'm not gonna touch you. I'm just gonna prod you away. Oh my gosh. Seeing as you are unfamiliar with sarcasm. <laughs> Sarcasm detector, what a great idea. <laughs> oh man. He does like the sarcasm. Yeah. Best sarcasm ever. Exactly. Well, and then uh we get introduced really quickly to Lee Carvalho and his putting challenge. Which is also very important for later. <laughs> very important and also a very good Dankmas song. It is. Yes. And we get uh, the Thrill House scene, which is probably, even though it's such a small, almost insignificant scene, it's probably the most popular moment of the episode. As far as, like, internet culture and meme culture, at least. Yeah, because, like, playing, like, Overwatch and stuff, I've seen several people named Thrill House. Yeah. Like, people have Thrill House tattoos, and I am honestly, I would love to be one of those Well, isn't, like, the last letter supposed to be missing, too? (laughs) Yeah, Thrill Ho. (laughs) Oh man, like it's such an iconic scene, but really over the as for the whole episode as a story, it's not super important. Yeah. But it just kind of shows the hype over the game. Like Yeah. All the kids are excited just to hear the music on the menu. And like it's it's like there's a there's like a fan blowing on him because like his hair's going back yeah. and what's that isn't that like one of the old like RCA commercials or something? Oh, with the air. Where that whole positioning where Oh. It's like straight on the side, looking yeah. at the TV with like everything blowing back. It's oh. I'll have to look it up. It, yeah. It's a it's an old like commercial or still image. Yeah. Okay. I didn't recognize that connection. And uh, we get Bart wanting to play with him, and Millhouse doesn't want to share. And we get the line, "Mom, Bart's swearing." <laughs> <laughs> and we have Millhouse's mom just sort of like nudging him out of the house which is another scene that comes back later so bart goes into the try and save which conveniently is wearing that purple sweater for the very first time in like ever Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And um, doesn't he say he's going to stand next to it looking sad, hoping someone will buy it for him? Yeah. <laughs> and I was trying to remember, too, like the way the case is, where it was like a plexiglass screen with holes mm-hmm. where they could like touch the game but not pull it out. Was that ever a thing? I don't remember seeing that. They at least never had them at any stores here, but that could have been something that was just in like certain stores or in certain parts of the country or the world. I, I feel like they, it's such a very specific design that I feel like it, it should have been somewhere first. Yeah. Um, well, those games are expensive too. Like Marge said, they're up to and including $7. <laughs> yes. Which made me appreciate game prices today because mm-hmm. if back then games were 60 or $70 Inflation. and they're still that price today, mm-hmm. then we're getting a pretty good deal. That's true. That's true. Uh, we get to meet Gavin, who Bart says must be the happiest kid in the world. <laughs> yes. And man, this kid's a this kid's a piece of work. Um. So he calls his mom stupid. He demands to get the game, and he says to get to. I'm not sharing with Caitlin. So he's literally making his sister have a different cartridge. Just because he doesn't want to share the cartridge with her. But that again builds up the hype, like you said, like putting down that trail, because Millhouse yep. did the same thing. Mm-hmm. He didn't even want to play two player mode of Bart. He just yep. wanted to play on his own. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, I think probably the, the last nail in the coffin is Nelson and Jimbo showing him the, the four finger discount. Because <laughs> they only have four fingers. And the practicality of Nelson stealing the same vest (laughs) and him saying, it's the kind I like. Like, no kid says that. But it also makes you realize he's not wearing a ragged vest. It just comes that way. Yeah. Like the jeans that have holes in them already. That's true. That's true. Well, and it's it's okay that he's stealing it because, you know, it's a victimless crime. Mm Mm-hmm. Like punching someone in the dark. (laughs) Oh, my God. Which makes you wonder what his definition of victim is. Like, if victim is just when you get caught doing something. The person that accuses you when you're caught. Exactly. It's not whether or not you're hurting the person. Okay, here's one of those really nice scenes where you can find a lot of writing in the background. So I paused it. Is it when he's grabbing the game? And these are all the other games shown. Okay, I'm glad you did that too. Okay. (laughs) So we've got Swim Meat, Save Hitler's Brain. So that's Hitler two episodes in a row. Yeah, that's really (laughs) weird because we had Hitler in the last one too. Um, Canasta Master, which I don't even know. I've heard of Canasta, but I'm not sure how it works. Operation Rescue, A Streetcar Named Death, Electric Biathlon, Angus Pod Gorney's Caper Toss and Celebrity Two Topsy, which I don't even know what. Because oh. it almost, I, I kept looking at it trying to figure out if it was autopsy, but it definitely was a T. And on Operation Rescue, the people just looked really weird. Yeah, like I feel like that's the one that they kind of, it was almost a throwaway. It wasn't really, it was like just a placeholder essentially. And in Canasta Master. I feel like it should have been Canasta Master. Oh, that would have been great. I mean, Come I, on. I should have been a writer for this episode. You should have, even though you were eight at the time? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Do we want people to know how old we are? We, we could do the whole dub, like Mr. Black. Okay, yeah. so what we'll do, we'll leave this in, but we'll oh, go God. back and dub over like... Oh, God. Years old or something like... I was uh, years old. Oh, when you get Microsoft Sam voice. The text-to-speech thing. Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> I, some of that might get cut. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Okay, so I actually wrote out. You can see all of the steps that it takes for Bart to decide to steal it. So first you get the commercial. And then you get Homer's stupid story where he talks about it was the mm-hmm. best day of his life. And then you get the um, disappointment at trying to buy it for 99 cents because he thinks that there's a way for him to get it. 
And then you get Milhouse enjoying the game, but not letting him play. Then you get Gavin. And finally, Nelson and Jimbo. And then kind of the last part is the fact that the case gets kept open. Yep. So it's almost like a perfect situation where all these little things just kind of come into place. And um, it's almost like the world is mocking Bart here. Yeah, it's like everything is like, you got to do it at this point. I mean, mm-hmm. not saying it was right, but it's in his mind. Yeah. It's just like, this is the only choice. Yep, yep. And uh, we get the cute little scene with the game mascots. And it's interesting <laughs> It's interesting to see their designs at this point in time. Because they weren't, they were still all relatively new. Yeah. And the whole take it thing from Sonic, I, I use that like almost daily. The purple Sonic. Take it, take it, take it, take it. So Bart ends up stealing it and he kind of sneaks out. And uh, outside the try and save, it, I noticed the sign. It says, in honor of our Lord and Savior, try and save is open all day Christmas. That's nice of them. Oh, isn't that sweet of them? <laughs> uh and Bart, as soon as he gets outside of the store, he goes, I got away with it. That's, that's not something you should say out loud. Yeah. He shouldn't have stopped. Yeah. He just kept going. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, he gets caught. And then we get Gavin again. And, um, and his mom saying that those parents must have made some horrible mistakes. Shut up, Mom. Shut up, Mom. So now the security guy takes Bart to the back room and um, Santa's whole reaction. Oh, he's disappointed and mad. (laughs) Yeah. He's like holding a candy cane and he just kind of crushes it. (laughs) Gets to see like the dark side of Santa. Like, oh my gosh. Um, So he sits Bart down in the security room. Well, on their way to the security room, there's just like a lady in her bra smoking. (laughs) <laughs> they had to decide to actively like create this throwaway character uh-huh. and put her there. I think it's almost like showing the weird underbelly of like retail break rooms. Yeah. Like the part that you don't see. So we get the Troy McClure video and I love that he says, thereby completing my plea bargain with the foot the good people at Foot Locker of Beverly Hills. <laughs> So, he got in some trouble. He's a shoe thief. Yes. And I love that, like, they're treating this, they're not treating it like, let's teach you why stealing is bad. This is just a straight up history of stealing. Yeah. It's called shoplifting (laughs) because they would lift the shop. It wasn't he stealing, like, olives? Yep. It wasn't, like, the sweet olives hidden inside. sweet olives within um, and he's like, no, let's go to ancient Babylonia. <laughs> and that's when they stop the tape. Um, and Bart gets kind of desperate here. He he keeps saying, well, it's okay. I'll pay for it. You know, I'll do whatever you want. That might fly at Lamps Plus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there just... Is there just a ton of people, but like trying to steal lamps? I feel like someone on the writing staff like used to work there and has like a grudge or a story. Yeah, I love too that he's like a detective. Yeah, like, he's like very like he's like a detective on a '80s crime show. But he's just security for trying to. Yeah, and he takes his job very seriously. Um, this line, oh my god. If I wanted smoke up my ass, I'd be at home with a pack of cigarettes and a short length of hose. <laughs> That's terrible. That visual. It is such a visual, and I wish I haven't. I hadn't seen that mental image. If you haven't seen the episode, check it out on Disney Plus. Yeah, all of this is on Disney Plus. Oh goodness. Um. Oh, so I actually read somewhere that. Um, so the Bradka guy was the guest star, Lawrence Tierney. And I guess when he did this part with the phone call, he didn't understand the joke. Like the whole joke where it sounds like he's talking to someone, but he's really not. And they actually had to record it with him talking to another voice because he, he couldn't, he just couldn't understand what the joke was about. Wow. 
Which I can kind of... It's a weird joke. But it's like, once you explain it, you're yeah. like, oh, okay, I get that. I He was kind of an older guy, too. Oh, okay. Like, I think at the time, he was pretty old. Um... And I don't know if maybe just the style of humor was just, it just didn't click right. But yeah, it was, it was kind of hard to get him to do that scene. Um, so he leaves a message on their answering machine, but it sounds like he's talking to them. And so Bart's like, okay, so they, he left a message on the machine and he gives him the warning that if he sees him in there again, he will go to juvenile hall, capiche. <laughs> and then he says... <laughs> Do you understand? And Bart says... Was it now or later when he's like, catfish? Oh, that's a little later. So Bart says, well, I understood everything except capiche. Uh, that's right. Um, the whole scene of Bart racing home to change the tape, which is very Ferris Bueller-esque. Yeah, I but, got but, those but, vibes. But very short. And um, he's going, God, I gotta change that tape. We gotta change that tape. And then the car passes by with Homer and Marge and Maggie. <laughs> gotta change Maggie, gotta change Maggie. We gotta change and like Maggie. even Marge, her head's like out the window. <laughs> so it's not just Homer, it's a real emergency. Yeah. And that's I, I thought that was kind of a cute moment that, you know, the you know, just having a baby that's that's something that's gonna happen those times where it's like there you're in the car and you can't change it quite yet and holy heck. Oh man, and this is one of my favorite lines. Where he turns on the tape, <laughs> and it's Camp Granada. <laughs> hello, mother. Hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. And then Homer goes, Marge is Lisa at Camp Granada. <laughs> I love that line. It's like, first of all, he has to think that that's how Lisa sounds. And that she's for some reason singing it to them. And, and that he doesn't know where his daughter actually is. Yeah, there's so many layers to it. And I love it. So we get uh, Homer buying up all the eggnog before the government takes it away again. <laughs> it's like a conspiracy. <laughs> we only get 30 sweet noggy days. Which, the day eggnog shows up on the shelves, I am always happy. Oh, it's always exciting. Yeah. It happens earlier now. I mean, we get probably a good 60 sweet noggy days, so... And then I don't want to get too much, and mm -hmm. then by the time it's gone, I wish I would have got more. That's how it goes. That's anyway. It goes. Um, and Lisa's kind of got an upset stomach because she's literally eating cereal with eggnog in Her it. Her chest hurts. <laughs> oh, God, that's terrible. Uh, and Marge tells Bart that they're going to get ready to go get their picture taken, and he's fine with it until he finds out that it was at the try and save. And this visual here with the steam coming out of his ears. Because at first you're like, this isn't Simpson style. And then, <laughs> oh, Marge just boiling two pots of water. <laughs> or Wait, two teapots. Why does she need two? And they're just perfectly positioned so that they're coming out of his ears. Bart has sort of a flashback imagination type thing. Where he has to go to Juvenile Hall, and the sign says, Juvenile Hall, proud home of the soap, the soap bar beating. <laughs> and um, and then there's that whole scene. When, oh, I got a book of carpet samples. <laughs> Last Tuesday's newspaper. It's just like the worst things you could get. A soiled wig. And then that guy on the other side of the window. Well, of course, I have Oh, is that what he says? Yeah, he says Merry Christmas uh, and Happy New Year. See, to me, I just thought it was nonsensical stuff. Yeah, for a while I thought it was that too. And then I, I like the first time I heard it, I couldn't unhear it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have um, Bart kind of taking his time getting ready because he's nervous. And Marge saying, if you're having the problem with your zipper, I can send your father up. And Homer has like this disgusted look. <laughs> I love the joke of the nice family photo. She's like, I, only, I just want one nice family photo. And they show all of the old family photos. And it's used as a gag. But it comes back in a big way later. Yeah. Yeah. Bart holding up the sign saying, I stink. And Homer going, I don't remember saying that. I love that too. Like His logic that it's like a captioning or something. Oh, the Homer logic. And this is where he says catfish. 
when they're okay. driving to the try and save. Which also shows that disconnect that that Bart does not understand the word capiche. Yeah. Oh, and that weird like the back seat like morphs into the security yeah, guy. I don't like that. It's creepy. And he says it like catfish. Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we've got them going into the try and save. Bart's all nervous. We've got the scene with the security camera where he's like on top of Homer's shoulders. Yes. And the security caravan is just following him everywhere. Um, Marge and the watch. Where she like really likes the watch. And Homer's brilliant thinking. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Or, <laughs> she thinks I'm getting her the watch. Wait until she really knows that I got her and what was it? An ironing board cover? <laughs> yes, an ironing board cover. <laughs> Oh man, Surprise. Homer's logic. He's it's just any any time when he's giving a gift to Marge, it's always a terrible failure. So um I never noticed there's this really cute moment. It's really small, but when they're getting ready to get the picture taken, the picture guy keeps messing with Lisa's hat, like adjusting it. And she looks really annoyed and pissed off. Oh. It lasts like two seconds and it's in the background, but she is so pissed about it. And this photo guy with him trying to cheer up Maggie. Oh, he's trying so hard. (laughs) The balloons. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and he's doing the high pitched voice. Oh, it's just air. Oh, it's just air. Ah. It's funny, too, because a big part of me, when they were looking at, like, the past family photos, like, Mm -hmm. why wouldn't they have just retaken the photos when he made that face? But it was a film camera. Mm -hmm. You got the family all dressed, and Mm -hmm. he did the quick face, and you didn't realize until a month later, and it was too late. Yep, it was processed. Yeah, that's... It's so weird how far things have come. Because at this scene, I was looking at, like, the huge camera that he has. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Bart gets caught again. Yeah. And he seems it's it's weird because he's he's very specifically not wanting Marge to see it. Yeah. Even though Homer is the one more likely to punish him, Marge is the one that he doesn't want to disappoint. I just found that kind of interesting. And then we have uh the Brodka guy meeting the rest of the Simpsons. That's <laughs> great interaction there. Giving him the warning that right now he might be stealing video games, but one day he'll be a grown man stealing stadiums and quarries. What has this guy seen? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. That's a big that's a big problem these days. Homer's like freaking out at him. Saying, like, oh what didn't you learn anything? Have you learned anything from that guy who gives sermons at church? Captain, what's his name? <laughs> Captain. <laughs> Why do you think I took you to all those Police Academy movies? <laughs> For fun? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then we're surprised by Marge's reaction that she's just... She's broken almost. She's just sitting yeah, there. Yeah, she's got that like quiet disappointment. And just like when he asks what to do and she's just like, maybe you should go to bed. Mm-hmm. And just, just like a, I'm done kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Lisa kind of gives Bart a talk in the bathroom, and she says something that is so illogically grown up, is that she says, I'll admit I haven't known mom as long as you have. What kid says that to their sibling? Because <laughs> Bart's like two years older than her. And she's, like, imagine me going to you and saying, you know, I, I admit, I haven't known mom as much as, as long as you have. It's technically true. You know what? As much as you try, you'll never catch up. I know. That's the thing. Like, you don't, that's such a weird wording to say <laughs> to your sibling about your parent. But it makes sense. And it's very Lisa, because she's always talking, like, she's older. Like, she's probably heard an adult say that to another adult about a third adult who was not related to them. But I just think that line's so cute. Yeah. Um, well, then she goes into a great, like, metaphor, too, for, like, 
how this is going to go over with mm-hmm. Marge. Saying that it's not like the porcelain sink that everything can be wiped clean. It's like that weird rug on the floor that just soaks everything up. <laughs> and then when Bart walks over it and it just makes that squishy sound. And it's like, it's not gray. It's not brown. It's just... It looks like it's growing many things. Yeah, it's a gross color. Like, that thing needs to be burned. Okay, so we've got Homer's punishment, which he's writing down on a piece of paper. He's trying to figure out for Bart. So he's grounded and no leaving the house, even for school. No eggnog. In fact, no nog, period. I know. Just... You know, all those other kinds of nogs. He can't watch any Star Trek Deep Space Nine. No, well... There's a few episodes of Nog, isn't it? Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, no stealing for three months. I mean, <laughs> minimum three months. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, and then they they get talking for a bit, and they sh- they eventually show what Homer's writing, and it's like a robot <laughs> roasting a hot dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, he looks so determined on how he's writing too. Mm-hmm. Like he's furiously writing. Mm-hmm. So we get, is this when he gets tucked in? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because Homer's writing the notes like in bed, like as they're getting ready. Okay. And then they go to tuck everyone in. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's kind of sad too, because when, when Bart hears that Marge is coming for him next, he kind of like, he kind of puts his blanket slightly further down. Like, in order to give her something to do. Yeah. It's sort of like a subconscious movement that he's able to tuck himself in, but he still wants her to do it subconsciously. Yeah. Um, and then she just kind of says goodnight and closes the door. Yeah, that's all just goodnight. Mm-hmm. Like, very flat monotone. Yeah. And then he wakes up in the morning, and we have the oddly really delicious looking marshmallow slice. I'm trying to figure out how and why that happened, though. Yeah. Is it just like a realization that he needs his mom so much that he can't even put marshmallow in hot chocolate properly? I I feel like there's certain things that you almost, like, don't know how to do when you're a kid, even though they seem so simple when you're an adult. Maybe. Yeah. But... Grandpa really wants a slice. <laughs> I want a slice. Okay, so we've got Bart asking Milhouse if he's worried his mom will never love him. And, uh, like, he's really trying to have a heart-to-heart here with him. And instead, Milhouse goes, I'm more scared about piranhas. This is my quote of the episode. I love this quote so much. Did you see that movie where they send a nuclear submarine to fight the piranhas and one of them swims right down the periscope and bites the guy in the eye and he goes, ah, 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 and that old lady told him it would happen? His energy there, like his screaming. Oh, and his movements, like he's covering his eyes. And the fact that that is such like a 90s disaster movie plot, it's so good. And this next little portion, I feel like this really tells a lot about the episode, that Bart is finally given the opportunity to play Bone Storm. Mm -hmm. Like, Milhouse literally hands him the game. He says he's not interested anymore. He's having more fun with the cup and ball, which is just one of those cups with a little string and a ball, and you got to get the ball in the cup. Those are hard. Yeah, they're hard as heck. And, And he literally gives him the game and says, go ahead and play it. And he suddenly wants to play the cup and ball instead. So it was never really about playing the game. It was about doing what... What's popular and cool at the moment. Exactly. Exactly. He once again tries to get Bart out of his room by calling for his mom. Except this time he says, Mom, Bart's smoking. (laughs) And the way she gets him out, she's just like flicking his ears almost. Uh Uh-huh. And he asks if he can hang out with her while she does mom stuff. And he just kind of sits with her while she labels Christmas cards. And it's just such a weird scene. She's very happy, though. Yeah, yeah. 
But you can tell the further it goes in, she kind of realizes just how weird it is. Yeah. Like, especially at the end when he goes, please tell me I'm good. Yeah, he went too far there. Yep, that was too far. So he ends up going home, and he finds that the rest of the family has made a snowman family without him. And this is, it's almost... I don't know. I almost wonder if that was Marge taking it a little bit too far. I don't know, though. It seems to work. That's true. It does. And, um, like, oh, there's some snow left under the car. <laughs> the old dirty snow, like, the like it turns it into a black sheep snowman. Aww. Um, so that, that seems like the last, the, like, the last straw for him. And he goes back to the try and save. And um, you kind of don't see what he does. Yeah. Yeah. And we we also get to see Nelson again stealing the wheel for the wheelbarrow, (laughs) which he has no reason to own. It's just just the thrill. It's the thrill of it, which I wonder. It's the thrill house of it all. That's true. And um, we come back. It kind of cuts right after that to. Back to the house when they're doing the spray on snow with Lisa. And Lisa looks like she's about to pass out at any second. <laughs> There's still a little bit of green left on the tree. <laughs> oh, God. And she just, like, drops the can. Like, her eyes kind of become vacant. and She just drops the can. Like, she's just going to pass out. And then Bart comes back into the house and he's hiding something. And this part yeah. was really intense to me as a kid. Oh, yeah. And it's... It's almost like if it was the game, you can hear that panic that would have been in his voice, but mm-hmm. it's like a different type of panic. And mm-hmm. he's just really trying. Like, it makes me think what was the it was the one where he accidentally shot the, the mama bird mm-hmm. and he like saved the eggs and stuff mm-hmm. and he was trying to hide them and everything. It's almost that same kind of like panic. I'm trying to do good, but please don't ruin it. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. That's very true. I didn't make that comparison. But that does make a lot of sense. We've got Marge saying, don't try to hide from me. I spend 23 hours a day here. <laughs> Poor Marge. Poor Marge. And Homer's whole, uh, get him, ma. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, when he like closes the gate. <laughs> it's kind of cute, though, because he's helping her. Yeah. And he's being like sly about it. And then we got the emotional part where Bart gives Marge what he was hiding. And it was a picture of him. And I, the receipt attached to it is a good touch because yeah. we don't have to add extra dialogue with Marge saying, did you steal this or, you know, did you steal the frame or anything like that? Yeah, it just says paid in full. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of picture that even if he did run into the security guard, if he told him, look, I've got this and I paid for it, you can kind of fill in all those blanks. Yeah. Marge is so happy. And it, I love, too, that when she puts the frame in, in the other frame, it kind of levels it out. Yeah, it kind of, like, it, they kind of made a job of almost showcasing it when she hangs it and it tilts right away. Like, mm-hmm. things aren't right at this moment. Something's mm-hmm. off. Something's askew. Uh-huh. You need those uh, frame adjusters. <laughs> yes. You ask questions like, who are you? And what, what? are you doing? <laughs> oh, God. And I, I kind of love the symbolism as well, that in the end, he still doesn't get bo- bone storm. He gets the Lee Corvallis putting challenge, but he's still happy about it because that's not really what he wanted. He wanted the approval of his mom and yeah. and the, you know, knowing that she's not disappointed in him for this. She's trying to reward him. Yeah, just like he, him trying to get the photo to her was his gesture. That was her gesture to him. And at the end, we get a little... A little preview of what Lee Carvalho's putting challenge looks like. Oh, it looks like a great game. Oh, it looks like high quality. And once again, there is a high quality Dankmas remix of Lee Carvalho's putting challenge. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. We gotta, we gotta mention the Dank. Must. We must. And that's, that's it. Yeah, and that's a good Christmas. Like, I like most of the Christmas episodes, and this one mm-hmm. was really well done. Oh yeah. I would say this is my second favorite. It's it's pretty 
Uh, I'd have a hard time picking between this and Simpsons Roasting. But they're just both good. I think I'd have to put Simpsons Roasting just a little bit higher. Possibly just because it's the first episode ever. But, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. We're going to take off for a little bit for the holidays. So this one should be releasing on the 15th. And we're not going to be coming back again till January 5th. So we will see you in the next year. Um, before I forget, quick shout out to Timothy Burleson. We love you. Yay, thank you. He is our patron. And uh, check us out on patreon.com slash Simpson siblings. No, it's not Simpson siblings. It's patreon.com slash Simpson sibs. See the link in the description. You can get some cool stuff. Smooth. Next time, we're going to be trying to tackle a character study for Mona Simpson, Homer's mother. We haven't done a character study in a while, and we actually announced this one like six months ago and never got to it. So I'm looking forward to it, though. Yeah, it should be fun. Something a little different, and that will be January 5th. So I hope everyone has a good Christmas, New Year's, and Hanukkah, and whatever you celebrate. Have a good one. So until then, happy Happy holidays, holidays, everybody. everybody. Buy me Bone Storm or go to hell.